back. No followers podcast. Bob T. Cam Erickson has not left that seat. So do you have signs? And, and I'll take it from both sides, so we won't be negative. But um, signs that it's a good fit for you as a taking it from the client side, not the consultant side. Signs that that's the right consultant for you or signs that it's not the right consi- consultant. Um, yes, usually during the interview process, so the engagement is depending on open, how open individuals are um, when you're first working with them. If they're open to identify what their failures are, what their successes are, um, if you do deep probing questions and they provide real, open, honest feedback, those are the type of relationships that you're going to get a lot more out of, and those are the type of companies that are going to end up seeing results. The uh, individuals, if they're quiet, they don't want to talk about failure, they just want to talk about all the successes they have, then generally you're not going to need a consultant. And those are the type of personalities that we deem um, aren't probably a good fit for our company. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I want to step back for a minute and say that, you know, it's not that I think startups never should use consultants. Because I, like I don't like to speak in the definite and say never. But if you were to ask me what do I think the preferable path is, it would be to build your team first. Build your internal dev team, whatever that means for you, whatever that means for you and your product. And then use consultants as an additional strengthening factor to that team. And I'll, I'll lump in with consultants, even the way we do it, engineers. We use engineer consultants. We don't have engineers on staff. The reason is there are specific times and problems where we need engineers, much like you're talking about consultants, to solve a specific problem. Is this joint strong enough? Is this fastening method appropriate? Is this uh, kinetic model appropriate for what they're trying to do? We bring in the engineer team. It's an objective third party that can give us a definite answer, plan, strategy, all that kind of stuff. I'm, you know, for a startup, if you're going to, I'm sorry, but if you're going to a consultant first thing right off the bat, it's going to be a long road. Well, I agree with that. And one thing I would like to point out is any business owner, you need to do research. Yeah. So if you have a problem, your first thing is you're typing in there and be like, I need a consultant to do that. That's not the right way to do it. Mm-hmm. You can need to go out there, find resources, start talking to people, um, look at other websites, be able to do a lot more research and review ahead of time, prove that you need a consultant, try to work through some of the problems. And then once you un- understand what it is that you're looking for, then you'll be able to identify the right type of consultant that you need and they can provide service for you. I would imagine too that like if you can if you as a startup can get to that one step forward where you have your team and you are at the next step, I think you're going to get more value out of a consultant because the consultant might be able to reveal team inefficiencies or team gaps or maybe there are biases in your team that you can't see internally and you need that third party to be able to come in and reveal that. I think that would be incredibly valuable to a startup. So I do think there is value, but I think you have to go about it the right way. I'm going to disagree on one level. If you're building a company, one is you should be the expert in the room about your own business. I'm tired of meeting people, even in this incubator, that come in and they know nothing about the market. But there is one model we've used a lot across the globe. It's the board of advisors. Mm -hmm. Because that because we're all about speed to market. I don't care what kind of company we're starting. It's about speed. And you building a team, most entrepreneurs do not build teams right the first time. Agreed. They get it wrong because they, bull, they pull their tribe in. People yeah. that think like them. Mm-hmm. That's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. One or two on the list of why things fail, right? If you know enough about your company, a great test to see if you're going to be a successful business is bring those board of advisors around you attract them in first so that your battle plan can be faster because you can bumble with a great team. I consider that part of your team. But that I consider could be your a group board of, of advi- consultants too though. Yeah, I mean it could be like it, it's not unknown to to pay a board of advisors, but you know, the, I I think that's a different project plan than what we're talking about here for the most part. Like for the most part here we're talking about identify a specific issue to have a consultant on your board of advisors. That's a long-term strategy. And you need to have a consultant that is 
on the same page as you for that. I don't think there's any problem with that. I think that's great. But I'm saying, I think if you go, I want to start this business making these boxes and I don't know where to start and I'm going to call a consultant, I think you might as well wrap it up right now. Because you're not- You buy the boxes somewhere you're, else you're, and resell you're, them. You're not going to- you're not going to be able to overcome the thousands of challenges that are going to be in your way if you have to call a consultant at every turn. And that's where I stand. But this is where Cam and I agree. The consultant should not be there to yes you. The consultant should poke holes in everything you say. You I didn't just, say they should. You, you just did. No, I didn't. Yes, yeah, I'm going to play the tape back. You said, I said you they should, should be on the same page. What do you mean? They shouldn't be on the same page. I didn't say they should be on the yes, same page. I said they should be on the same page with you about your timeline. I didn't, about the, time. I didn't hear timeline. The whole point of what I was saying was that that's a long-term strategy and they need to are be on the talking? same page as you. <laughs> I think there are situations where building a team first can work. I think there's also times that doing research and being able to identify where you need gaps um, as a solo um, can be extremely value and bringing the right consultant can provide value. But again, it's really understanding and building that knowledge and background and challenging yourself and then asking the right questions and then working with the right people that are gonna get you there. So there, I think there are two avenues. You can build the team first. And I think there's also ways where you can leverage good consultants that have walked the path, that have that knowledge, that can help determine how to build the team or be able to create the processes in place in order to have a successful strategy. So I think there are two paths, but I think the key thing that you both touched on was making sure that there is research, research, review, and that you do your homework ahead of time. We're focusing a lot on startups, uh, and I don't think that was the intent, but that's just where the conversation took us. But I think no matter what stage you're at, one of the big things is we talked about coachability and are you open to what the consultants come back with. But the second part of that for me with, that drives value is do you have the resources? I don't just mean money. I mean all of the resources necessary to execute that plan that comes back to you. Because if you do not, and part of those resources are willingness to execute it, ability to execute it, right? All those things come into it. You could give me the best plan in the world. If I can't in implement, it doesn't matter. But that's part of the, so if, a, uh, if you're working with any consultant and they don't understand your business, what you're looking for, and they don't give you options to help you succeed and saying, okay, we can do achieve this within one month, but we're gonna need $100,000 and I need these resources. Or you can do it in three months, but it's gonna be $50,000. Or we can bring it out into nine months, but it's gonna call you 10,000. Which one do you want? Which one can you afford? So we, we should be working with the companies in order to provide the options, in order to provide the value to you, yeah. or looking for consultants that are able to understand what your limitations are and then provide a solution for yeah. you. I mean, I think, I think understanding what your limitations are is, is a large part of it. Because like, I mean, we talk to people all the time that go, yeah, I decide I'm just gonna make it myself and then ship it from my house. Well, how big is your garage that you're gonna tackle distribution and shipping? It's a great plan. It's a great plan on paper. It's not realistic. You can't implement that. You're not going to go to market with that strategy. It's not going to happen. You know, so I, I'm saying from the startup perspective, you can give me three options. If I, as the business owner, don't have the emotional intelligence and the ability to take stock of my resources and the ability to execute and implement, because you're going to go away, you know what I mean, as the consultant. At some point, right, you have a handoff and you're not there. If I don't have the resources in place to continue to implement that plan like you were saying like some people you do you do launches or you do a software implementation and they go back to their old ways you can make the argument of was there any value creation let's say they spent i mean it doesn't matter if they spent five thousand dollars if they went back to their old ways i would argue there was no value creation there so if you don't have the team in place and you don't have the resources and the ability to implement and execute then that is a recipe for disaster, in my opinion. And I'm going to wrap this up. We had some words of wisdom from Cam, and T just kept talking. I'm here so, too. So, uh, <laughs> till next time, Bob T, say goodbye to Cam. He's not coming back for another podcast because he doesn't want to. <laughs> we'll see. You. We'll see you next time in No Followers Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for listening, watching, and subscribing to No Followers Podcast. We'll see you next week.